As far as historians can tell, this is the oldest image of glasses in existence. It's a 1351 painting of Cardinal Hugh of St. Cher from a monastery in Treviso, Italy. But this cardinal died in 1263, 23 years before glasses were invented in Pisa. Spectacles then gradually spread across Europe and traveled the Silk Road to China. But if glasses weren't around until 1286, that leaves a lot of history where people must have been straining and squinting to see things. So how did people with poor eyesight get by before the invention of glasses? Let's start with presbyopia or farsightedness, an inevitable byproduct of aging that's plagued primates for millions of years. Historian Vincent Ilardi writes that before the age of spectacles, presbyopes were not totally at the mercy of nature, but found means to use magnifiers conveniently to continue productive work. Go back to the monastery in Treviso and you'll find a painting that shows one such magnifying lens. At that point, primitive magnifiers had been around for thousands of years. Excavations of Viking graves have uncovered the Visby lenses from the 11th century. They're perfectly ellipsoid crystals, probably used as reading stones or by craftsmen to see fine details. Other lenses are much older. The ancient Greeks and Romans had polished magnifying crystals, which they used to light fires. And the ancient Assyrian Nimrud lens dates back to 750 BC. Quartz lenses even existed 4,600 years ago in Egypt's Old Kingdom. Some scholars have wondered if Egyptian artisans used these lenses to make the minute details on their ivory knives. Although it's not clear that all of these ancient lenses were used to enhance vision, magnification was a well-established technology before glasses. In general, if you were farsighted, there was hope. But what did nearsighted people do? Surely, if you're the kind of person that can't read an exit sign from 10 feet away, you'd have been useless in battle or seafaring. That assumption's probably correct. For instance, in the first century AD, the Romans excused an Egyptian weaver named Tryphon from military service for shortness of sight. If technologies existed to help people with nearsightedness or myopia, they were primitive and rare. Emperor Nero reportedly needed to watch gladiator games through a polished emerald that concentrated the powers of vision. Yet people didn't need clear distance vision like they do today. They weren't reading chalkboards in lecture halls or road signs in traffic. If you weren't a sailor or a soldier, you likely spent your day as an artisan, smith, or farm worker. The fact of the matter is that myopia simply didn't matter as much at the time. While nearsightedness lowered your value as a slave in ancient Rome, it was usually a superficial defect. One ancient Roman author noted that nearsightedness is not a defect which impairs a slave's usefulness. One who is by nature nearsighted is as sound as one who runs more slowly than others. But perhaps myopia so rarely shows up in the historical record because not that many people had it. Nearsightedness is a modern epidemic. 60 years ago, 10 to 20% of the Chinese population was nearsighted. Today, roughly 90% of Chinese young adults are. In the same time span, myopia rates have doubled in the US and Europe. By contrast, during the Renaissance, Italians called farsightedness common vision. Nearsightedness was relatively rare. There weren't swaths of nearsighted people in need of glasses. The scientific consensus is that lifestyle changes are driving the nearsightedness epidemic. Some have blamed heavy reading, but recent research suggests that more exposure to the sun during eye development can protect against myopia. For the bulk of human history, lack of sun exposure wasn't a problem. So perhaps the takeaway from the history of eyesight is to act like our ancestors and go outside. Hey, so if you guys thought this video was interesting and you want to see more, please consider donating to our Patreon account. Uh, you know, anything from a dollar, a quarter, ten cents, just anything will help. We really want to make this our livelihood and we want to keep on bringing these videos to you guys. Thank you very much.